Hey, how's it going? My name is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey GUI short tutorial number 18. In this one we're going to be taking a quick look at pseudo arrays and using pseudo arrays to streamline your code when you're building uh, large GUIs. So briefly I'll touch on what exactly this is. So if we look at this picture, we have four houses and we can think of our variables as an having an address. So a variable has an address and in that address lies the contents of that variable. An array is similar to that where it has the same all the very the elements of it share the same street address but each element in it has its own unit or apartment within that at that street address. So they all share the same street address but they have their own unit that they live in. A pseudo array has some of the behaviors where we can use it sort of the same way we use a regular array, but it's not an actual array. All it is is just regular variables that are masquerading as arrays. So with that out of the way, hopefully uh, that makes a little bit of sense. If, you, if you're familiar with arrays and variables and the difference between them, that should be uh, quite clear. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to use a pseudo array within a GUI to streamline some code. So if you've ever tried uh, actually using a regular array inside of a GUI, you know the problem that you have. Okay, so let's just, uh, I'm going to call my array AR and okay, so there I've, I've created an array. And now I'm going to go ahead and try to use an array inside of a GUI. I don't care where it's positioned. All I care about is using my array. So I'm going to take my array my, and I'm going to use its first position. So I'm going to say that the, the variable that's associated with the first edit that we were using is assigned to the first element of our array. If I go ahead and try to run this, boom I get an error because you can't use arrays when you build a GUI I don't know why they did it that way but whatever for whatever reason that they did it that way you can't use a regular array inside of a GUI so the way you work around that is by using pseudo arrays so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly as quick as I can I'm gonna create a GUI that has 10 10 checkbox and I'm just gonna do some basic positioning and I'm gonna create some variables I'm gonna call them checkbox I'll keep it lowercase checkbox one is our first one and I'll put some text beside it that says the same and now I'll just duplicate two three four five six seven eight nine ten now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through them all and I'm gonna change the number at the end of them and I'll go into more of this in a few minutes but for now I need to set up everything and I don't usually do too well if I'm trying to talk about things or think about things and type at the same time okay so now we have a GUI with 10 checkboxes on it. So what we're going to do in this simple uh, first example is I'm going to create a button and when I press this button what I want it to do is I want it to check or uncheck these checkboxes. So I'll quickly add in the button and I'll attach it to a label and I'll call the label check and uncheck. And I'll add some text to it. Okay, now that I have a label in here, what I need to do is actually come down here and create it. <coughs> oh. 
Okay, so we have our GUI. It's got 10 check boxes and a button that when we press this button, what we want it to do is to check or uncheck these check boxes. So the next thing we're going to do is because we're using a button, what I need to do is I need to create a variable that I'm going to keep be able to keep track of uh, whether how many times the button's actually been pressed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable up here and I'm going to just call it var and I'm going to set it to initial value of zero. Then in, immediately inside of our label here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that var variable and I'm going to add one to its value. Then I'm going to check to see, right after that, I'm going to check to see if the value of var is two. If the value of our var is two, what we're going to do is we're actually going to change our variable var to a value of zero. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to check if it's 0 or 1, because that's the values that we really want. So if it's 2, we're going to set it back to 0. If it's not 2, it just adds 1 to its value. So the first thing we're going to check is if var equals 1. If var equals 1, we are going to come into a loop. And how many times do we need a loop? We need a loop 10 times. Okay, before I go any further, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to talk about how we actually use pseudoarrays. Okay, so if var equals 1, we are going to come into this loop. If var equals 0, it, we're going to come into this one. And because these two are connected, we can actually put an else with this one. So it skips it if it is equal to 1. Okay. So this is how we now let's talk about how we actually make our pseudo array. So a pseudo array is basically for the most part it's two we're going to use two variables in the same variable. So see how each one of these this one is checkbox 1, this one is checkbox 2, checkbox 3 all the way up to number 10. What we can do instead is we can use another variable, let's say i and we can say that i equals any number. And this is going to be a counting variable that we're going to increment later. But we can set it to any value. Let's say it equals 3. Okay. And now what I can do is, instead of typing out this checkbox 1, instead what I can do, or rather, because I set it to 3, instead of typing out this checkbox 3, what I can, instead I can type checkbox and then the variable i because i equals 3 it's the exact this is the exact same as if i typed out this is the exact same thing so if i set this one to equal 5 and if i what I can do now is I can actually check. So what I'm going to do is have it display the value of checkbox 3 rather than checkbox i. And you'll see that it is in fact the exact same. Checkbox 3. Okay, so here you can see I haven't written down checkbox 3. I said checkbox i equals 5. And then in the message box, I'm going to display the value that's stored in checkbox 3. And we can see that checkbox i is, in fact, the same as writing checkbox 3, if i equals 3 up there. <clears throat> okay, so that's how the basics of this is going to work. I don't have a lot of time to go over this stuff in these mini tutorials, so... Forgive me for just glossing over stuff. Okay, so we have our, our GUI. We have our button attached to it. Now what we're going to do is inside of here, at the very top, each time we press on that button, we want to reset the value of our i variable back to 1 because it's going to be the element in our pseudo array. It's going to be the position in our pseudo array. So each time we press this, we're going to set it back to 1. And then when it goes into our loop, what we're going to do is we're going to have it take that i variable and add 1 to its value. Before we do that, because 
currently i already equals 1 and we want to actually do something with our our i equal 1 so before our we increment our i variable what we're going to do is we're going to change the state of our checkbox from checked to unchecked or checked unchecked to checked so we just type in gui control and then what do i want okay i want the variable's name so i want to cycle through all of these check boxes so the way i do that is i just type in the variable's name and i can either write in its numerical value there or instead i can use my pseudo array and change and put in the i So now it'll cycle through. The first time it'll go through, it'll be checkbox one. And then the next time it'll run through, it'll be checkbox two, checkbox three, checkbox four. So instead of me writing out 10 lines of code, each with its the checkbox one, checkbox two, checkbox three, I write it out one time and use a counting variable in this position. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, tell it what we wanna do with it. So we're gonna change it to a value of one so a value of one for a checkbox is the checked state so we're going to change it from whatever state it is to a check state and then we're going to do the same with our if var equals zero if var equals zero instead what we're going to do is we're going to cycle through it and we're going to change it to a state of zero so to begin with our our gui has all these checkbox they're not checked if we press on our button, it's going to trigger this label, which is going to increment our variable var. If var equals 2, we're going to reset it back to 0. If not, it's going to check if var equals 1. If var equals 1, it's going to loop 10 times and change our checkbox controls from being unchecked to being checked. If we press the button again, it will the value of var will now equal zero because it's it initially started at zero now it's one and then we press it again so it equals two and because it equals two it's going to change it back to zero so this will be true it'll come into our loop and loop through it ten times changing it from checked to unchecked <clears throat> now unlike with uh, multiple other things that we do when we uh, let's say if we were to check on the checkbox we would want to attach that to a label that is going to submit the values now and most of the time we will have the submit command or GUI submit right up at the top of our label with this one here what we actually wanted to do is at the bottom so before just before it encounters our return is where we're going to actually submit the values into the variables for our checkbox so we're going to type in GUI submit no hide and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna display on a tool tip we don't need to do this but uh, it's often good to have a visual representation we're gonna pick a random one let's uh, let's check the value of checkbox five we're gonna check the value of checkbox five because they're all gonna be going at the same this value is going to be the same for all of them and I think we have our program so if I save this and run it now instead of us having to type out 20 lines of code for these changing the value of it we, we've automated it and it's going to cycle through it on its own like as if it's an array so if I hit check or uncheck it should if I have all my code right it should check all the boxes and we see that the tooltip displays a value of 1 representing the value of our check state and if I hit it again it'll uncheck all of our check boxes okay so that's how we can do it with a button and using our own uh, control variable uh, this var variable if we want to do it with a checkbox instead what I'll do is I'll just add another checkbox here And I'm going to go to the same, it's going to go to the same label. And let me see. 
I can get rid of this. Uh, actually, no, I need to add a variable here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that var variable in here now. But because this isn't this is a built-in variable that only has a value of zero or one, I don't actually need this here because I've already submitted it here. So I can get rid of this. <clears throat> I can leave it there, but I can get rid of it as well. What I can also do is I can get rid of this and I can get rid of this because var is never going to equal to. Okay. And I think I think our code is good. So if I run the program again, now if I check this checkbox that says check or uncheck, it'll mm. Oh, okay, okay. Because I am using this variable here for the checkbox, what I do need to do is right up here. Add in my submit so that it updates the value of our variable. Okay, so now if I check this, all the checkboxes become checked. If I uncheck, they all become unchecked. Another way that I could do this is if I want to say, for example, only do the even number checkboxes. So I click on this and only the even ones become checked or the only the odd ones become checked. I can write in the code for that as well. Um, let me do this. Uh, even, I'll do a mod function. Even colon equals... the mod of i and 2 and in here what I'll do is I'll say if even is 0 if even is 0 do that uh, I'm doing this on the fly, so hopefully this works out okay. So hopefully, hopefully, it's only the even check boxes that'll get checked this time. No. Even is... I divided by 2... Oh, okay. No. Hmm. I shouldn't do these kind of things on the fly. I should really plan this out. Okay, maybe now it'll work. Okay, there we go. So only now the now only the even check boxes get checked. And likewise, I can do odd. So now it's only going to be the odd ones that get checked. And you can work, play around with the logic and get it to do whatever you want. But that's our tutorial on pseudo arrays. And coming up soon, we're actually going to be using similar tactics to actually build our GUI. All right, have a good evening, and I'll see you on the next one.